Hello, everyone. I'm James Howell. I teach biochemistry and molecular biology at uh, Penn State University. And I'm going to talk today about uh, using Emacs to make all of the materials uh, for presenting course meetings in my courses. Everything that you're going to see today uh, is what I've made using the methods that I'm going to describe. And so uh, the the main point is that you can take uh, an org document and make, with a single uh, Emacs document, make both a pretty um, uh, text document that a student can have on the desk and take notes on, and also, uh, I hope, fairly um, useful and uh, attractive slides like the ones that I'm presenting right now. Okay, uh, both of these from a single uh, from a single source document. Okay, and um, if you'd like to see the handout that goes along with this, you can download it at the uh, at the repository where I've put um, everything's here. So if you'd like to go look at it, you can follow uh, with the handout. So I promise to talk about both authoring and presenting. And first, I'm going to talk about presenting. I'm not the only one who does this. Uh, you might have seen uh, System Crafters or Prote's channel or Mike Zemanski's channel on YouTube. Prote actually is uh, um, going to be presenting tomorrow. And maybe you've seen uh, this chemical engineer at Carnegie Mellon, John Kitchen, or Eric Fraga, or Olivier Berger, all have made blog posts about using org mode to produce uh, uh, course materials. And this pair, Ro and Nam Kuhn, actually published a peer-reviewed paper. So there's prior art here that I'd like to acknowledge. So let me talk about uh, my practices. Uh, first, the hardware. This, these are the. This is the hardware that I've. That I'm using to record um, this recording at the very moment, um, but also I carry these into um, uh, every course meeting, uh, and I've done this for quite a while. This entire semester and a few previous semesters, where um, everything fits in a backpack, um, and I do every uh, meeting with this uh, tablet. It's a Microsoft Surface that I put a Linux distribution on, and this. Um, this uh, uh, laptop, and I've got you know a bag full of dongles <clears throat> and and connectors and so forth. It all fits in a backpack. This is very mobile. I can set it up and tear it down before and after every class with just a couple minutes. So there's the laptop and the tablet with the stylus, so that I can where's my stylus, so that I can draw. <laughs> so that I can draw, which is very useful. Obviously, I need a, a camera. Um, I, today, I'm using a desk mic, but when I'm uh, remote, I use a lapel mic um, and a video converter. And I'll show you why that's important. And then all of the all of the ancillary equipment. And um, one thing that's nice about using a completely free software stack is that it tends to run on uh, underpowered hardware. And so the, none of the software cost anything. Um, I could have spent much less than this uh, on um, a used computer and a used tablet. Um, and everything else is, you know, it, th these are high estimates. I spent way less than $1,000 for all of this equipment. And it's my equipment. So I have hardware and software control over it, which is which is nice. So if if you have if you have an attitude of upcycling and building and you know, this is a hobby anyway. This is an easy way. So that what I'm saying is the the entry into using these things. There's certainly a very low cost barrier, um, because the um, because the hardware is so weak. Um, I have the tablet for uh, doing tablet stuff, and then I use the laptop to do all of the streaming and recording. Um, and so I take the video output of the tablet and convert it to USB input into the um, into the laptop. So just to kind of give you a diagram here, there's a laptop and there's a tablet. The tablet has a stylus <laughs> and uh, they both run GNU Linux distributions. You got a webcam that goes into the laptop. You've got a uh, video output from the uh, the tablet that goes into the laptop. There's a microphone that goes into the laptop and then um, audio and video come out of the laptop and go into some AV system or another. OK, and so this is this. This was Wednesday, I think, teaching microbiology. There's the tablet. There's the laptop. There's the external screen. Um, there's the, in the podium here. You can plug into the AV system. Um, uh, 
So there it is. And um, from where I stand, this is what the screen looks like. And this is what students are seeing on the live stream and later on the recording. And students in the room can see this as well. And so you notice this is kind of meta, but the camera and the, and the contents of the screen are there. And so when I wander around and when I stand in front of the screen, the students who aren't in the room can still see what I'm pointing to on the screen. So it's all, nobody gets left out. Okay, so let's talk about the software that I use. Um, there's a lot of different things that I want to be able to show. And so I, I need a few different software packages besides Emacs. <laughs> so for drawing on the tablet, I use, um, I don't know quite how this is uh, pronounced. I think it's uh, Shornal++. Um, I use the web quite a bit. Um, especially if I want to just spontaneously look something up. Um, often uh, I use video, especially molecular animations, and that's incredibly powerful. Um, and then now and again, I want to look at text, um, especially in the English course that I teach. Uh, there's a lot, quite a bit of text, and so I'll use Emacs for that. Um, the, the video uh, compositor, the thing that puts this video and me in the green screen and uh, all of the stuff together is called uh, OBS Studio. And then um, for, and that also does recording. Um, it's almost a completely free software stack. I use Zoom to do the streaming and video conferencing because all of the students are forced to use it for their other classes and I've gone along with it, but a good alternative is Jitsi Meet. There are others. Okay, so again, here's um, the hardware setup. And so on the tablet, I'm running uh, Shurnal. On the laptop, I've got Firefox and VLC and Emacs. Uh, OBS is compositing that together and I use Zoom, but you could use Jitsi. All right, so let's, uh, I can, let's demonstrate this live. Here we go. Here goes nothing. <laughs> so uh, the drawing program is really good because I can draw with a stylus on a tablet. Um, it's a, it's a remarkable thing that I, I teach in these big lecture halls and there's, I guess they want them to be fancy and so they don't have blackboards and whiteboards. So if I want to be able to draw, if I want to do anything approaching analog, it has to be with this software. Um, and in this presentation, I don't have very many diagrams, but in my courses, most of the slides are complicated diagrams and so being able to annotate them is is really important and so this is why i mean i i don't use emacs for presenting these kinds of uh documents because i want to be able to mark them up visually so i can show you what that looks like uh by the way here's what OB, how obs works right so i can go from different scenes so i can just do just me or i can show you the slides or I can show you what I see on the tablet. So on the tablet, I can go through all of the, you notice here, I'm scrolling through um, all of the different slides and I've got all kinds of different markup tools and I've got um, tools for controlling Zoom and what page I'm on, um, but you don't have to see that. Okay. Um, Firefox, boy, I do a lot of this. So all of our, uh, all of the quizzes in, in, quizzes and exams in my courses are online on this um, on this web platform called Canvas, which is good enough. Uh, it's based on a, a, a GPL3 uh, package, but this one is proprietary for Penn State. And notice that every there's a quiz every day, and this quiz, um, every quiz has a recording from that day. And so you notice there's a picture of me teaching, pointing to the pointing to the um, slides and there's the slides themselves. And I use OBS to composite in the Zoom chat because I teach this hybrid. There's people in the room and there's people at other campuses who are who are in this course. And so having the Zoom chat in the uh, live feed is very useful. And then um, the quiz. You know, at the next class meeting, we'll go through this quiz. And so here's some experimental data. And here's a question where they're supposed to uh, um, uh, interpret these data. And so we can we can in class together, we can review those. So that's why Firefox is useful. Um, now, th this is the one that really being able to inhabit, being able to inhabit figures like this is incredibly powerful. 
Um, this is the silver lining of being forced to teach uh, online during the pandemic because I couldn't do this uh, before I had a green screen. Um, but even more powerful than this, um, if I, for years I showed students this figure by standing in front of it or by having it on a projector projector screen above me, and I said, "Well, here this is uh, this is the B form of DNA. This is the most common form of DNA." And you see here that there's this minor groove, and then this feature is called the major groove, and students couldn't see it. But if you animate it, right? If you just have it move, it, the 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 apparent movement is not really movement; it's apparent movement, and it tricks your visual cortex into adding three dimensional structure to this, right? So you can see this feature is the major groove, and that feature is the minor groove, and a static image just can't provide that understanding when a, a moving image can. Okay, and then. I use Emacs to look at text. So where's Emacs? Here's Emacs. So we read Vonnegut in this English class that I teach. And so I'm going to tab over to Emacs. And it's nice to be able to um, have have text jump around and be dynamic, right? So if you want to look at um, if you want to look at this passage, and I'll have somebody read it aloud, and then we talk about why he chose this word and why he chose that word, and the the cadence and the alliteration, and then we can go to another um, particular uh, uh, excerpt and pick that apart on the screen together. And that would be difficult to do with other software. That would be very tedious to do uh, on the chalkboard. So Emacs is is really good for that sort of thing. Um, mostly, what I use Emacs for is not to present. Um, but to uh, make slides and handouts. Okay. And again, the thing that I want to stress is that the, the slides and the handouts can be produced from a single uh, org document, org mode document. This entire uh, presentation was assembled in Emacs, and I'll show you how I did that. Um, so uh, the I think everybody probably knows what org mode is, um, but for our purposes, it's a way to write documents in plain text. That's very important because that uh, one of the biggest um, advantages of this is being able to do uh, version control. And so I don't have I don't have PowerPoint decks everywhere with slides that um, there's no way to keep track of them. Having these be plain text means that I can just put them in a Git repository. Um, very clean and human readable markup. Um, including uh, um, handling tables, which is just incredibly powerful. You can manage projects and tasks, but the fact that it's an outline, that you can produce a document that's hierarchical and, and fold and, and reveal different parts of it, but to produce a book length um, lectures uh, for an entire semester and use those to produce both slides and handouts, that's very powerful, at least for my brain, to be able to put it all together and have it be discursive rather than having it be graphical, okay? You can export to a million uh, different uh, formats, including PDF documents like the handouts as LaTeX and um, slides like these uh, through Beamer export. So the approach is to think about pedagogy rather than thinking about software or thinking about um, graphic design, right? To think about how can I make the best argument? How can I make the best the most effective uh, sequence of ideas. And so all I've done is make a few tweaks to um, the export uh, backends for LaTeX and Beamer to customize them for my particular needs. And I'll show you uh, what I've done. So you see, and you've seen this already, right? Where I, I, I'll, I'll put one idea in big text on the screen. Um, I find it to be uh, effective to uh, make a single idea explicit uh, at one time. Now, some ideas are, are, some concepts can be explained with words or text, but many ideas are best just illustrated. Um, in contrast, we've all used PowerPoint, right? And Edward Tufte has taught us about how PowerPoint is so terrible from a cognitive point of view and from a communications point of view. So using org mode is much better. How, how is it better? Well, um, Tufty also tells us that uh, any kind of um, any kind of uh, oral presentation that is substantive at all has to have uh, some kind of physical handout that um, the audience can use to take notes on. 
and slides are terrible handouts and notes are usually terrible slides so having one document where you can produce both and have them be uh have the same organization but different structures and different uh visual organization um is something that i've wanted for a long time and i can only do it with emacs um being able also for my brain to separate the work of writing and developing ideas and developing uh, explanations and developing arguments and scaffolding them. That's jargon in, in pedagogy for, uh, you know, bringing the student along. Separate that work from wrangling slides. That's super helpful for me. All right, so again, you have uh, an org document that makes both the handouts and the slides. Um, what's beautiful about it is that everything is an outline. And again, it's very discursive. And here's Tufty's famous poster where he's making fun of the, the psychology of PowerPoint. I don't know about you, but I'm, I have the kind of brain and I'm in the kind of job and I'm at the kind of age where I don't have extra cognitive function, you know? And so uh, having uh, streamlining this workflow has been really helpful. All right, so let me show you uh, what I've developed. Um, let's look at the org doc. Okay, so what you see is you have a, a typical um, uh, org mode buffer, and it has, there's there's two headings here. One of them uh, is stuff that I've deleted, and the other is um, uh, the talk, okay? And so all of these subheadings have uh, various uh, things underneath, including these uh, macros that I wrote, like include slide, impact slide, subsection slide, et cetera, and then a bunch of stuff. Um, and then I've got this include file that has the, that just has the macros that I've written. And you can look at this on the repo. I'm not going to take the time to walk through it and explain what all the LaTeX means, but The upshot is that um, by putting uh, by including that file that has all the macro definitions, you get things like uh, this macro pause or new line or white space break, which just allow um, uh, pause splits a slide into two frames, like you, so you can get these overlays so you can go through paragraphs one by one, and uh, these just put white space in, and um, oops, uh, text slides. Um, this thing here, this this title is a, a level three heading. Figure slides the same thing are level three headings. One of the most powerful things is that I can take other files, right? I can take other org files that have level three headings that are slides, and those can be in some other repository. And so I only have I only need to have one version of that slide that I can use in multiple courses. And just that. Just that functionality um, is incredibly uh, helpful for keeping track of work from a few years ago. Um, all of these I'm going to explain in the next few slides. So the section slides um, correspond to course modules. So each of these is going to be a few weeks of a course. And so this is a major division of a course. And I have some macros so that I can decorate this with, with uh, relevant information. And then for every subsection, every level two headline that corresponds to a major course topic in the module and then text slides again level three headlines uh become titles for the slide and then a level four headlines become uh text elements uh most of my slides look like this they're figures right where you know here's the glycolytic pathway and so um level three gives you the title you can put um uh it, it's missing here actually but there's a there's a caption you can way you can put in captions and and this line here just tells the latex export backend how big you want it and stuff like that um impact slides uh they have to go under h1 or h2 and they just give you one of these text slides um an entire slide being an image uh, you can use this image slide macro um I often put in blank slides to remind myself that this is a time to stop. And often there's something for me to draw here with the stylus. Um, and I often use um, 
I often use, it used to be PowerPoint, now I use LibreOffice Impress to make uh, multi-slide animations like, you know, the sphere and the donut and the GI tract and, you know, this hardware thing that I did for you today. And I export those animations as PDFs and then I can just uh, slurp them up into, um, uh, into the slides and uh, just into the slides, not into the handouts with this macro. I hope that you find this useful. I hope you share it with other educators that you know. Um, here is the uh, the source hot repo. Um, here's how to get in touch with me. Um, I look forward to addressing your questions. And I want to say thank you to Sasha and the organizers and to everyone who made this possible and to all of you in the community because as we all know, that's what makes that's what makes Emacs such a strong and powerful. Uh, package is all of the people behind it. Thanks, everybody.